Hello. I truly think that the disciples use are camels or something. Yeah, absolutely. For these distances, so there's, there's no way so. you could walk. These yeah, distances. I would think camels. You're right. Yeah. We're Gabriel and Lorraine, and we're on a one-month God adventure as we go to the incredible places He sent us to go. We started our morning in the old city of Jerusalem during Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. Since this is my birthday, I chose to revisit the site in the Jordan Valley where Jesus was baptized. We'd been there in 2014, and I had a powerful encounter with God during this act of rededication as I entered the waters, so we came back to do it again. Only this time, it was Gabriel's turn. Directly across from us is Jordan and the eastern bank of the river. Scholars believe the Israelites crossed over the Jordan River at this point to enter into the Promised Land, and that this is the place where Elijah ascended into heaven. In this place of biblical significance, it was great to see people from so many different nations coming here to enter the waters to be baptized. A public confession of faith in Jesus in a place where promises are fulfilled and where destinies begin. El mensaje para ustedes es que el bautismo representa realmente una nueva vida. De la muerte a la vida, la resurrección, nosotros en él, a través de su sangre, estamos siendo limpiados en el nombre de, de, de Jesús, en el nombre de Yeshua. Amén. After drying off from our plunge into the freezing cold water of the Jordan River, we headed back to the old city, the walled area within the modern city of Jerusalem. The old city is divided into four quarters the Jewish Quarter, the Christian Quarter, the Armenian Quarter, and the Muslim Quarter. We went into the Muslim Quarter to meet Chris Mitchell, the Middle East Bureau Chief for CBN News. Chris began reporting on the Middle East in the mid-1990s, and a mutual friend wanted to introduce us as we were on our way to Iraq following our time in Israel. Because we were early for our appointment, we had plenty of time to explore, hang out, and people watch including this older brother who was so sweet as he took care of his little sister coming back from school. And another little boy who wasn't so sweet as he tried to con me into giving him my camera. We met up with Chris and had a great time as we got to know each other, share amazing stories, and spend time together in prayer. When it was time to leave, Chris walked back with us through the old city on our way to Christ Church Guest House where we were staying. We were so glad to have Chris as our guide. Not only did he show us the best shops and introduce us to his friends. I don't know if I have. Oh! Yes, I have. You look like George Kakaris. He also kept us from getting lost in the maze. The original level, but it's the original stones really? from like Roman period, 2000. Wow. It was a relief to know that he also gets turned around in this place after years of living in Israel. Chris made room in his schedule to interview me on CBN News about the book I'd written called Love in the Face of Isis and on the film script that we're currently developing by the same title. Here's the short clip that made it onto CBN's broadcast. It's called Love in the Face of ISIS, a book covering seven prayer strategies for crisis in the Middle East. In 1 John it says God is love, and so if you substitute God in the face of ISIS, there comes this whole other powerful meaning. Um, but we know that God's heart is for all to be saved. He doesn't wish to any, any to perish. Author Lorraine Marie Varela and her husband Gabriel lead a ministry called Inspiring Faith International. She says her book is about carrying God's heart into conflict. Jesus spoke about loving your enemies. What does that look like? It's easy for us to say that when we're sitting in the West from our comfortable homes and churches to love our enemies, but when we're confronted with such a violent group, it really changes the dynamics of how we need to respond. Varela adds that first response must be prayer. I had a vision of being seated in heaven, looking at the earth from God's perspective. And I knew that that was a prayer directive. When we pray, we realign our thoughts and our attitudes, our perspective, our eyesight, our vision with what he's saying and doing. And then we change, and then we come into alignment to release his strategies and directives over our situation. In her book, she lays out the strategies. The Lord showed me that through his covenant names, we can release strategy. 
He's the Lord who is there, first of all. So we want to cover the whole area with his presence. He is the Lord, our provider. There's a need for provision. You know, there's uprising taking place once more. And so as a result, people are being displaced and women are becoming widowed. And there's a real need for physical sustenance and help. So there were seven different covenant names of God that he led me through to release um, his love over the situation of our people. Those names include the presence, the armies of protection of God, as well as perseverance for the people of God and provision, healing, and peace of God. What I love about the book is that one, it awakens people's hearts for the situation in the Middle East, but two, it awakens their hearts to what God's purpose is, is over them and their families and their own life situations. So all of those covenant names of God, they're applicable no matter where you live and what your situation is. Morella sees it as a boomerang effect. When we pray for the needs of others, God brings that blessing back to us. And so if I want to pray for his presence to be very real in the Middle East, and I'm I'm dedicating my time to doing that. He's then bringing his presence back on, on my home and my family. A film version of the book based on real life stories is also in development. It will focus on the struggle of two Iraqi brothers torn from their family who fall into a gang controlled by ISIS. The purpose of the film is to bring encounters for Muslim people with the heart of Jesus. And that can happen in a movie theater, that can happen in your home watching the DVD, but it's to bring encounters in his presence to be real. And for believers to have an awakening of the need to be praying for our brothers and sisters and those in the Middle East, and just to have a heart change. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Not only did we get to celebrate my birthday during the Feast of Tabernacles, but our 33rd wedding anniversary as well. On our anniversary, we stopped outside the Western Wall to impart a special blessing over every married person who would see this video. We're at the Western Wall celebrating our 33rd wedding anniversary. We want to see the blessing over those who are watching who are in marriage because we want to impart what God's given to us into your life. Lord, we just thank you today for all those marriages. May you go before them. May, may you be in the middle of their relationships with Lord God, with their families extended families and other marriages from each family unit. Uh, we pray, Father, that and say that love is a demonstration, not an inclination, just like Yeshua demonstrated His love for us in the same way we do that for our marriages. Father, I thank you for the plans and the purposes that you have for marriages, for the, for the couples and the families to create with you these, these designs that you place into their hands. Lord, I ask that you would show them the path that they should walk in that you would open up these doors, that you would help them to dream with you, and that their dreams would be big, God, as families, to walk in the plans and purposes that you've created from eternity past. Lord, we thank you that you have designs for entire family units, and you have designs for husband and wives. You have plans and purposes, Lord, for, for their joy, but also to help bring your kingdom here on earth. So, Lord, we thank you for that. We ask that you would be inspiring their hearts, even now, to dream big with you, in terms of what you have for their family. We thank you for inheritance. We thank you for destiny. We thank you that your purposes will not fail. Amen. The Garden Tomb is one of the most spectacular places to visit in Jerusalem, and it's a personal favorite of my own. The owners are quick to admit that no one can know for certain if this is the actual location of Jesus' burial and resurrection site, although there are many interesting parallels with historical details that can be found here. For example, at the far end of the garden, there's a platform that faces a rough cliff, an area that was part of an ancient stone quarry in biblical times. It's known as Skull Hill and is a suggested location of Jesus' crucifixion site. There's even a resemblance of a skull in the cliff. Whether or not this is the place of the burial and resurrection of Jesus, what is not in dispute is that this place carries the peace and the presence of God. And it's no wonder. People from all over the world are drawn to this place to worship Jesus and remember His love and sacrifice for humanity. In every part of the garden, worship is being proclaimed in various languages. 